Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I am doing my fully painted review of the Silver Bullet. So I'm holding this up. Before we get started, I'm gonna turn on this rotating base and we can look at the full 360. But I did a fully custom paint job of the Silver Bullet and I can get into it a little bit like the idea behind what I was doing, but in short, I was trying to build a Mark VI there was no Mark VI, the Gundam only went up to a Mark V, and so basically I took the Silver Bullet and I made some modifications and painted it in Gundam colors. So that said, I'm going to put this away and zoom in a little bit, turn on the rotation, and we'll get right to the review. Okay, so here we are looking at the Silver Bullet. So I can just start off by giving you some background about this kit. Um, it's kind of funny because I had been working on a bunch of older kits, just vintage stuff and some no grades, and I was planning to move to Japan, and so I said, you know what, let me try to do one more kit before I leave. Let me do a high grade. That's fairly modern. It's from 2014, I believe, and I'm like, ah, oh, that'll be quick and easy, and I'll be able to get that painted up before I left, and boy, oh boy, was I wrong. This is the single most difficult kit that I have built besides the Master Grade GP01, which is a kit from, I think, I keep getting this wrong, I think 94, 96. Um, but anyway, so it's a, about a decade later. It should be much easier. And it was actually pretty on par, really, really difficult. Um, so difficulty aside, oh, I guess I can get into the difficulty. There were just a lot of parts that if you wanted to paint them, you had to do heavy modifications. So, I mean, this torso, I completely had to gut, do a ton of surgery, completely hollow it out. So that way I could paint the parts without having to mask everything. So I could take it out and, and assemble. Um, for the thighs, I did, you know, the simple trick of cutting the thigh into two pieces and kind of making a panel line there where there was none so you can snap it back together and put it on top of the inner frame. Um, just little things like that. In addition to, there were a heck of a lot of seam lines. I mean, this gun, this cannon was a nightmare. Um, these boosters were a nightmare. I can go ahead and cut to some photos of the front of the boosters and show you guys pictures of what it looks like. Just some very odd placement of panel lines and just the way that parts would join. Like I can say right here, oops, like this front piece um, of those vertical portions that stand up was just an absolute mess. And so I had to do some wacky putty work, masking, puttying some more um, to just get it looking good. So. I really like how this kit came out. I think it was a fun build. Is it perfect in my book? No. But as I was telling some friends, as I was working on this kit, my MO for this kit was try new techniques and experiment. So you can see with the thrusters, I was kind of playing around with adding some clear colors on top of the metallics to create kind of that hot metal effect. I did it on most of the thrusters on the kit. Some came out better than others. I think these big ones, came out pretty well. Those big thrusters, by the way, are not stock with the kit. Those are third-party wave parts that I added on. Um, there were a few little modifications I did like that. These verniers or thrusters on the shoulder packs, um, or whatever you want to call it, just shoulder pads, I added those. And then you'll see all these little screw holes. I took my god hand pin vise and I drilled those in. I also added the piping there on the crotch part and the piping there on the arm that goes into the cannon. The thought being, you know, it would like power the cannon or something fun like that. Those are uh, Gundam Builders parts and that's all added. It's not stock with the kit. Um, I drilled some more holes in the sides of the feet and then I added rivets everywhere. If you look closely, there's tons of little rivet details and all of those are third party parts. Um, this little singular line at the bottom of the cannon is a part that I added as well. And then I also scribed an additional line or two on the feet. 
to add a little bit more detail. Those side lines didn't connect on the top, which I thought was kind of goofy looking. So long story short, a lot of work on this kit. Um, really happy with how it came out. I guess one last thing I'll say is I added this, um, I guess it's like a belly cannon or something. I don't know. I just thought it looked cool. And then I added this asymmetrical detail on the front. And then I masked out all of the V-fins to add yellow. And I think that's everything. I might be forgetting some stuff here. Then there's some basic top coat and water slides. I wanted to do another top coat and do some light weathering with Mr. Weathering to just add some rust effects. But it was... Um, yeah, I was just running down to the wire with moving to Japan, so I decided to just hold off on that and just call it a day. It's got a little semi-gloss finish, which is kind of fun because I almost always do a matte coat. And that's pretty much it. So this is my version of the Mark VI. And yeah, I'll just post some pictures, progress pictures and finest pic uh, final pictures. And you guys can take a look at those. And thank you guys so much for watching. This was a um, really fun build, really challenging build. It was a lot of emotions with this one. So um, all in all, I really like it. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe and hit the bell icon and do all that fun stuff, I would be super uh, appreciative. And um, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.